Sometimes I think the word game is stuck on almost everything that isn't serious. If you play music, if you draw pictures with a computer, that's not a game. You don't get a score, but we call it games. And there's sometimes this down thing, don't play games, don't play around on the computer. And yet there's a lot of good can come from game playing. What's up, everybody? Um, just doing a quick stream here. Go over some stuff with the JG Maker Magic here. Um, not a bad little machine. I've been playing with it offline here. Um, pretty impressed with the print quality I was getting off of it and the attention to things that I normally complain about, like tinned wires and stuff. So we're going to go over that really quick, and then we're going to pull the winner for April. And I figure it's fitting. This is the last uh, stream printer for... Uh, the month of April, and we give away a printer every single month. So we're going to give away a JG Maker Magic. So uh, I think it'll be a good little machine. I was taking it apart to just go over uh, the different design aspects. So let's kind of jump in and see what design choices they did and what surprises I found. Not bad, but good in terms of design choices. So we've got here um, the main board, okay? So... Standard run-of-the-mill. This is uh, basically a ramps all-in-one board. Uh, we see these from companies like MKS um, and even Creality. This is basically taking the Arduino Mega 2560 and combining it with the ramp shield onto one board. Um, these are reliable. It's an older design, but it works. Um, a couple of things I want to point out on here that I like that they did. So we've got a connector here, fairly beefy. And if you notice, we doubled up on the power for the bed power distribution. And this bed does hit 110 degrees Celsius fairly quickly. I timed it at about six and a half minutes from room temperature to 110 C, which is respectable considering this is a very entry level machine. This is a sub $200 printer. Um, good quality MOSFETs used on the board here. This is a, uh, I, I'm gonna butcher the name, but it's a, a Hui um, or H-U-Y-A-I. Um, same brand of MOSFETs we actually use on our, our easy board here. Um, they're really good Chinese MOSFETs. They handle a lot of current, they run cool, um, and they're cost effective. So one thing I do want to point out, and I've mentioned, you know, with MKS making boards for other companies, this MKS likes using this brand of MOSFETs as well. Um, and just the, the color selection of the motor plugs and the layout of the board and the style, um, I wouldn't put it past, uh, past them that this is an MKS board uh, that they designed for the JG Maker here. So, or the JG Magic, sorry, JG Maker Magic. Uh, it's a mouthful to say, but I do like this. Now I have this disconnected because I didn't notice this. We're doing the video because we didn't take the board out. They actually have this massive heat sink on the rear of the board to help dissipate the heat from the driver. So you don't see a heat sink on here. And this is a, actually the correct way of doing it if you have a lower copper count board um, because these drivers all sink their heat through the bottom of the chips. And we've got a nice big heat sink on the back here, spreading that out. Now, these are the 4982, uh, they're the HR uh, brand. They're not Allegro's. HR's are knockoffs of the 4988s. They're not bad drivers. They're just not Allegro's. Um, they're, they're, they work. Uh, that's really what it comes down to. They're cheap drivers that work. They're not silent. Uh, but I just wanted to point that out because I was pretty impressed that they went through the trouble of putting that heatsink on there. Um, I was able to get my hands on a copy of the source code for this. And this board is set up in Marlin 
as a ramps board. So the board configuration type is a ramps EFB, so an extruder fan bed. So the pinout is the same as a ramps as far as I can tell. I will be diving into doing firmware for this machine um, in the near future here. I'm currently allocating time to get our branch updated to Marlin 208. So uh, adding new printers on while we're trying to do a major code update is not something that uh, we can do. So uh, hopefully in a couple weeks we'll have firmware out for this. But like I said, we've got ferrules here, no tinned wires. Um, ferrules here on the power main power input. Um, this is your run-of-the-mill uh, Chengling power, power supply, um, same brand that Creality uses. Um, they're, they're, it's okay. It's just a no-name Chinese power supply. So one thing I want to do, because we didn't do this, I was kind of in a little bit of a rush towards the end of the stream yesterday just because everything going on here. I want to go ahead and do some more safety tests on here. And one of those we do is the uh, continuity for the ground. So we're going to see how our... Our grounding is here from the grounding lug to the chassis and if we notice here we have a dedicated ground wire as well so there's two ground wires going into the lug on the PSU but they also have one dedicated to the chassis which is nice to see so even if this power supply doesn't have a good ground we've got a dedicated ground wire so um, I'm pretty impressed with the build quality on this. Like my one major, my, my complaints with this machine, you know, I'm, I'm honest with you guys, um, is that I wish there was a way to lock these uprights in, like whether they machined out just a little channel for these to sit in so they can't, you know, rotate or not rotate, but, you know, tilt forward and backwards and no eccentric on the, um, the ax carriage. So, but those are really minor things. They got a lot of the important stuff right on this machine, which I was not expecting at a sub $200 printer, to be completely honest. Uh, we could complain that it doesn't have a 32-bit processor, but at the end of the day, it's a cheap machine. Um, these, it's, it's got a 2560, so it's not like they're using a Melzi board, so this has 256K in program memory. You can do a lot with Marlin, even still with this older 8-bit chip. Uh, but let's go ahead and see how our ground looks. So let me go from the uh, lug itself to the chassis. And we're at, we're reading like 0.8. Now let me, just to be fair, let me dig my probe lead into it so we get past any oxidation or anodizing or coatings. So point, point 0.8, point 0.9, not terrible. Um, I would like to see that lower, but let's check the actual chassis ground itself. So I'll just go, uh, all this stuff is coated, so that makes it harder. So let me see if I can get my probe lead. Oh no. Well, good thing I got a million of these. I just was trying to force this in and bent my probe lead at the bottom here. Let's uh, scrape this away and see how our chassis ground is. Um, uh, I, <laughs> I broke my probe. Oh, yeah, that's not making connection anymore. All right, stand by. Let me grab a new set of probe leads. <laughs> I bent my tip. That's a first on stream anyways. Okay. We've got brand new leads. Uh, Cause these do, we, I do go through these quite frequently. So no big deal. Uh, but the thing is they got this coating over the uh, chassis, which a lot of these companies do. And you got to kind of get through that to get a good reading with your multimeter. So let's just check, make sure these leads are good. Yeah, we're at like point, point 0.1. Okay, so there's our baseline. Let's see here. Let me see if I can get through this coating. I don't know if that's going to be good enough, but we'll find out. No, hang on. Let me, uh, let me get my screwdriver in there. Let's see. There we go. I got some bare metal now. All right. Let's see. Bare metal to ground. Like 0.2. It's not terrible. All right. So the PSU itself does have a higher ground resistance, which is what is to be expected for these. Um, I've been barking up this tree for years, but the good thing is we do have, we're not relying on this power supply's ground 
for the chassis ground, which is really important. Um, I'm not going to be like, oh, it doesn't matter. It does matter. This power supply should be properly grounded. Um, this is very common with these no-name power supplies, uh, the Cheng Ling one. These are the same ones Creel to use. So, and then this is... Uh, this is a 24 volt, three, yeah, 24 volt, 350 watt. So same exact one. The label's on this side, so I was rotating it. But like I said, overall pretty impressed with this. If I take these out here, that was in there nice and tight. This seems to be a pretty beefy terminal as well. Let's see here. How do these look? Well, this is like stuck. There we go. Okay. There's ferrules, but look at this. Whoever crimped these on here didn't do that good of a job. Because the ferrules should be... all the, the wire should be all the way to the end of the ferrules. Do you see this? So whoever crimped these on this particular unit didn't do a very good job. I'm wondering, am I able to pull them off? No, so they are making connection, but it looks like you can see here. It looks like the wires like just about halfway in um, I'll show you guys what how, how a crimp barrel should look. Let me grab my set here They tried I'm glad I pulled those out and looked because these should be they should go all the way in so let me Let me snip these and we'll go ahead and strip the wires. So they're they're using copper wire. Is it copper clad aluminum? And nope, it's it's actual copper, so that's good. It's not silicone. It doesn't need to be silicone though for here. So this is what I'll usually do. I'll strip them to about yay long. And we'll put them in the ferrule. And if any sticks out, you just trim the end. But you want to have the ferrule or the wire all the way into the ferrule. Um, what is this, 14 gauge? Looks like 14 gauge. Uh, two by 1.5 millimeter, there's no AWG. So it's gonna be four, it's not 12. So in my kit, probably be these blue ones that'll fit these wires nicely. Yep, so you wanna see the wire at the very end of the ferrule when you're using them. Do you guys see this? So you want to strip it long enough so you see the wires right at the end. That's what you should see. So now if I take my ferrule crimp here, put it on there, squeeze it, you'll see there the wire is at the end. That's what you should see if you're doing ferrules correctly. And I'll usually put it in and just give it a couple in the same location. Make sure they don't come off. And that's what you want to see when you're using crim ferrules is the wire all the way to the end of the ferrule because you want it to be clamping onto that when you're doing the actual clamping here. Now I can up the tension on my my tool here, but I usually keep it right in the middle because sometimes it'll go too much and it's really hard to squeeze. But anyways, so they tried. I'll give them that, but those should be crimped fully uh, and they should go all the way into the actual ferrule itself so it makes good connection um, this terminal needs to be opened up a little bit more this is a nice beefy terminal though why is this not going down There it goes. It was just hung up a little bit. All right. So now with correct ferrules on there, or correctly installed ferrules, I'm going to go ahead and tighten that back down. But I would check your guys. That's probably just my machine, maybe a couple others, but it doesn't hurt to check. Uh, it, they seem to be making solid connection, but 
it's clear that these this feral it doesn't even look like they were using the same kind of crimp tool i use to do it because you can see it's not like a square thing you can see the wires going about halfway up into there based on where it is but still better than tin wires in my opinion um so i'll give them that but yeah the uh the build quality on this is is way better than i expected for the price point to be completely honest so we've got a filament sensor on here stock uh, we got a 2560 CPU, not the best, not the worst, uh, gets the job done, you know, non-silent drivers. So we got the 4982s. Um, the only downside to this is uh, changing this board out because this is a proprietary form factor. Like this doesn't match up with any other boards on the market. Uh, it will mean you have less easily installable options for upgrades, but you do have a lot of room down here to work with. So not the end of the world but this board will will do the job so and like i said based on uh, the color of the terminals and just the style and component selection i i wouldn't i wouldn't put it past that uh, mks is making these for jg maker so but yeah um i'm pretty happy with it i don't know if i I'd, I'd buy this over at ender three um it really it really depends it's definitely adequate it's appropriately priced for what you get I'm, I don't dislike it, so I just need to spend more time with it before I can be like, oh yeah, it's amazing. So, but once I get uh, new firmware on there, I'll be playing with it some more. So, I don't know if anybody, uh, I don't know if anybody else has this machine, but like I said, for the price point, especially if uh, you can get it on sale for like 150 bucks, that's not bad either. So... But let's uh, let's get into this. So I just went over that. Um, all in all, I don't have any major complaints. The eccentric nut missing on the X is, uh, is a little bit of an annoyance. Um, it should have this. And I'm going to send them an email since they reached out to us. And they sent this printer to us for review. I'm going to let them know, hey, you guys should be putting eccentric nuts on the actual X carriage. It's just standard to do that. Uh, because once those wheels start wearing out, which they will, you don't have any range of adjustment on it because there's no eccentric nut on there. So uh, let's do the giveaway. So like I said, every every month we give away a new machine. So I got everybody's names entered into the uh, the spin wheel here. We got 568 entries. There's You can enter multiple times. It's once per stream. Um, it's not open right now. The next time the giveaway form will be open is on our stream on Monday the 3rd. So uh, we do a new one every month. So let's see who is going to be the proud owner of a JG Maker Magic 3D printer. There we go. Let's see. Let's see who. Uh, let's see who the winner is. Crystal Schaefer. Crystal Schaefer. So Crystal Schaefer is the winner of April's 3D printer giveaway for our channel here. And I do have one more giveaway for you guys. Uh, if you do want to enter, you have to be present. So I will be using Nightbot to do that. So congratulations to Crystal. I have your email because we collect the emails on the forum. So I will email you if you're not watching. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, send you out a JG Maker Magic 3D printer. So... Uh, what I want to do, though, is what I totally forgot to on the last stream was I have two brand new jars. This was for U.S. only. Um, two brand new jars sealed of Maw Energy Drink. These are my two favorite flavors. I've got the Mythic Melon or Mythic Melon and the uh, the Green Growl. So this is like an apple and this is a watermelon flavor, like Jolly Rancher type watermelon. These are my favorites. So... I've got a couple of these still sealed because uh, I have my auto ship set to two weeks um, and I'm not drinking them that fast. So I figured let's do a giveaway. Let's and you'll get to pick which one you want, either the Mythic Melon or the Green Growl. So all you guys need to do, um, let me put a keyword in. Uh, the keyword will be energize me. So if you want to be, you want a chance to win a brand new jar, uh, your choice of either the Mythic Melon or the Green Growl, and you're in the U.S., um, I don't know about shipping this stuff to Canada. I guess it's considered a supplement. I don't want to deal with customs. 
So if you guys want to enter in, go ahead and type energize me, all one word, into the chat below. And then uh, whoever whoever enters that and Nightbot pulls your name, then uh, yeah. So, uh, and channel members, since we're doing channel members now, you guys have are you're two times likely to win any giveaways that we do with Nightbot. So if you're a channel member and you want to try it, um, Nightbot has a setting where you can give channel members more more luck. So, but let's see. We'll let everybody get their their stuff in. Um, I do a longer stream delay for this one, uh, just because I want to have a little bit higher quality for replays when we were going over the printer. So. Let's see. Everybody's typing. And this is a, a caffeine mix. So you basically put this. I always, I use a shaker cup. They also sell shaker cups. I use this. You just put water in it and put a scoop or two in, depending on how high your caffeine tolerance is. And then, uh, yeah. So. Yeah, I'm not sure how shipping this stuff outside the U.S. works. Do you guys know? Because um, it's considered a supplement. Can you ship supplements outside the U.S.? Or do the postal services get weird? I feel like that some of them get weird. So, we'll see. All right. So, I'm going to go ahead and give it another, like, 30 seconds. Just let everybody get their stuff in. Is this, is this the sound effect I'm looking for? I don't know if it is. Uh, well, anyways, I was trying to find like the do, 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 do. All right. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hit roll it, and Nightbot is going to pick a winner, and then you need to type in the chat what, uh, what flavor you want, and, uh, I'll give you the email to send your, your details to. Um, or if you're already a customer, if you just post an old order number into the chat, I can then pull your shipping information from there. That'd be the easiest. So let's see who is going to get to try one of these moth flavors. And Kyle Fegley. Night, Nightbot just picked you. So Kyle Fegley, are you, you was here, Kyle? I see Kyle here. Kyle's, oh, I use four in a 32 ounce shaker. Jesus, man. I use like two. I'll have like two scoops in a day. Four is nuts. You've got enough, Ma? You want me to re roll it? Okay. I'll, I'll re roll it. Okay. We're going to re roll it. Um, oh, wait, no. That wasn't Kyle. Kurt said, I got enough maw. Kyle, do you want to re-roll it or do you do you want the uh do you do you want the winnings? I'm assuming you want it since you entered. <laughs> Green growl, there you go. Alright, and I'm assuming I'm pretty sure you're already in our shipping system. Let me double check. Uh, since you are using your actual I'm assuming it's your actual name. Let me say. Uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I got you. It looks like you ordered something from us a couple days ago. Some, uh, easy plugs. That's all right. Let's see if, if that's you. Um, uh, then I already have your shipping information. I'll, I'll send that out. It looks like all your stuff goes to the same address. Oh, you work 12 hour shifts. Okay. I, I can understand that. <laughs> Man, this delay is killing me. I usually do low latency on the streams, but I did normal because the video quality on the playback is a little bit higher. Um, but yeah, talk about a talk about a delay. Um, I forgot how bad the delay is when you're on the normal one. So, okay. All right. Well, that will wrap this up. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Um, like I said, if you guys follow our GitHub. Um, I have been making pushes to a new branch. Um, let me tell you the name. Um, I have not tested anything yet. 
Um, but there's a branch on our GitHub for unified firmware called 2.0.x-marlin208 base. That is where I'm putting the work for the migration from uh, 2072, which is what we're currently using for our unified two releases, to 208. Once that is done and all the configs are passed and compiled, we're going to go ahead and update a bunch of our machines here. And I'll go ahead and post in our Discord server, there is a... Uh, beta testing channel under the VIP section and if you guys have a printer that is supported by Unified 2 and you want to try out the beta let me know and I'll package up a copy of the beta based on 208 so you can help us test it um, let us know if you have any bugs that kind of stuff uh, just so everybody's aware Marlin 208 is a major update uh, just just because it's been so long since the last release. The last release, uh, 2072, was sometime in October of last year. So that's September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. So um, over six months. So a lot of code has changed. So I need to make sure that we qualify everything and make sure everything's working correctly just because there's been so many different changes from 2072 to 208. Um, I'm hoping a lot of weirdness with the current 2072 like i know scott said there are bugs with arc um arc support and i think scott was telling me something about uh bl touch settings or something like that uh, but if you look through the change log i read through the whole change log and what new features were added what bug fixes were added um to 208 there's a lot of stuff in there um, one thing i am seeing going through all the configs uh for 208 is it looks like they did a lot of updates for the daywind screen so we might be able to get more control over like the older or uh, the uh color screen on ender 3 v2 i don't know if they merged in code that another guy was working on on his own branch or not uh, but i do still have those screens around just in case there's a Marlin update that allows us to take over them and try to do more stuff with it. Um, I'm just seeing a lot of stuff about DWINs in the config files. So anyways, uh, we are working on it and you know, it's one of those things it's done when it's done. Um, we don't like rushing that out, but we're focusing time on getting that update done and tested because right now we're not adding any more new printers to the firmware until we get this transition done. So, um, yeah, then once that's done, we'll get the uh, JG Maker Magic added in there, and uh, we'll be off to the races. So I hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, it's Saturday over here, and yeah, I got a, got some painting to do, got some lecture work to do down in our basement, and you know I'll be back at it on Monday. And uh, we did actually hire a new person um, on Friday, so they're going to be starting in two weeks, and we'll have some more help around here, which means... Hopefully soon my time will be freed up and I can start dedicating more time again to development type work. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Thomas. Um, he sent me his Ender 6 LCD metal bracket, the stock one, so we can actually get the video done for the Ender 6 um, LCD conversion kit. And then, of course, right after his showed up, literally the next day, we found ours in the shop. <laughs> so now I have two of them, but I'm going to send his back to him and we'll get that video done. So, uh Thanks, everybody, for stopping by. Hope you guys have a great weekend. As always, happy printing.